This is episode 164. So, you just hit the publish button. Now what? Do you just leave your blog post as is, or should you do something else? It would be terrible if your blog did not start on the right foot. So, you need to optimize your blog post immediately after you publish it. In today's episode, I will tell you three things you must do to optimize your blog post once it's published. So let's get started. Welcome to the Calm Marketer Podcast. My name is Kenneth Fong, a digital marketer on a mission to help businesses thrive. I'll bring you on my marketing journey where you'll get to learn from my experiences as an INFP navigating an extroverted world and get actionable marketing tips for your business. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now let's begin. So I've been working on tons of different blog posts recently, and I wanted to give you my tips on what you should be doing once you publish your blog post. If you have been doing SEO for a while, you know that you need to optimize and figure out what kind of keywords you should be writing about and make sure your content is is optimized before you hit publish. But that's only part of the story. A blog post shouldn't just be left alone once it's published because you need to figure out whether or not your blog post is going to rank. And in some cases, it will not rank and you will need to figure out what you need to optimize after it's been published and after it starts ranking and figuring out what you need to do going forward. So in today's episode, this is part of a three series, uh, a three part series where I will be teaching you guys how to optimize a blog post after it goes live. So in today's episode, it's all about how to optimize a blog post once it's published. So there's three things that I recommend you do uh, once you hit the publish button, all right? So the first thing that you need to do is check to see uh, whether or not your blog post is indexed, okay? So the first part is all about indexation. So most likely, once you hit publish, it doesn't get indexed in Google right away. So what does that mean? That basically means that your page isn't isn't uh, visible in Google. So when someone does a keyword search, your your page won't show up because Google hasn't read it yet and it hasn't put it in the Google index. So in order to make sure that your blog post gets published uh, gets indexed immediately after it gets published, um, you could do a trick. So what you can do is request indexation in Google Search Console, all right? So log in to your Google Search Console, and what you need to do is paste the URL of your blog in the the top bar, all right? And most likely, you know, once you click search for that URL, it's most likely not going to be indexed. And what you need to do is confirm that you've uh, provided that new URL and request indexing. So you could request Google to index this URL. And when you do that, your page will get um, indexed in Google much sooner than if you didn't request Google to do so. All right. So, you know, depending on how often you publish it really depends on how often Google crawls your site. So if you update your site frequently, Google will know that and it'll crawl more frequently. But if you only publish once a month or once every couple of months, then it'll take longer for your new blog post to get published. So a way to go around that is to request indexation in Google Search Console, all right? and. To see if your page is indexed, um, there's two ways to do it. You could do, you could go to google.com and do a site colon search. So type in site colon and then put your new blog URL. 
And if it shows up, then it's, um, it's, it's indexed. Another way to do it, and I actually prefer this way because um, it's not necessarily asking Google to give you that URL. It's kind of mimicking a, a, a standard search. So what I would do is basically copy and paste a couple of sentences in the blog article and put it in quotes. All right, so copy and paste a couple of sentences from the blog article and search for it. Okay, search for those sentences in quotes. So you're telling Google to search on the entire World Wide Web for this set of, of sentences, for these keywords. And if your blog article shows up, then it's indexed. All right, I actually prefer that method more because it's a little bit more uh, realistic in terms of how someone would search versus a site colon search where you are actually asking Google. You know, so so try those two methods out. All right, so for the next thing that you need to do to optimize a blog post once it's published is to check and add internal links. All right, so this is a huge, you know, over the past six months to a year, I feel like internal links have been spoken about much more frequently in the SEO space and community. And now that it's published, now it's the perfect time to add internal links. Because before you publish, you can't add internal links. So now you need to add internal links. So it's very, very important to add them. Now, I'm not talking about internal links on the blog post itself, but adding internal links on other pages pointing to this new blog article. There's a couple of reasons why internal links are needed. The first reason is to encourage that indexation, right? So you guess you could manually tell Google to index, but if you have internal links pointing to this new page, the probability of Google crawling this new blog article will increase. And you'll also get uh, traffic from those other blog articles going to this new one. And you'll also pass what is that considered quote unquote link juice and increase your site's uh, link uh, authority, page authority, okay? So it's great because you can pass the authority of other pages onto this new page. And if it's a new page, then it starts from square one. So you need help from other pages by adding internal links, okay? So you might be asking, okay, which internal links should you include on your new page? All right, now, or which internal links did you include um, on other pages pointing to your new page? So there's a couple of ways to go about this. Uh, the first way is to use Google. So do a site colon search again, all right, but just for your domain. So site colon website.com, and then in quotes, type in a, a keyword a keyword that your new blog post wants to rank for. So if it's, you know, um, a, a dentist in Los Angeles, that could be a, a possible keyword, for example. And what you wanna do is a search for all the pages on your site that have the keyword dentist in Los Angeles. And Google will show you a list of those pages and it'll rank those pages according to the authority or how popular those pages are. So what you wanna do is pick um, you know, the top five and add internal links to those pages pointing to the new page with the anchor text, Dentist in Los Angeles, all right? And you wanna also do that for other types of um, natural language processing keywords or NLP keywords as well. So you could probably search uh, Los Angeles dentist or uh, Los Angeles implant dentist, affordable dentist in LA, those types of, of other phrases that you want your new page to rank for. Do a site colon search, find other pages 
on your site that have those other keywords and link from those current pages to the new page. So it's a little manual, right? You gotta do multiple searches, uh, but a quicker way and a more effective way is to use uh, Surfer's SEO audit. So Surfer is an SEO tool, a non-page SEO tool that I use uh, for my clients, and they have what is called an SEO audit. All right, so that basically means that Surfer will audit your page and give you some optimization opportunities. And one of the optimization opportunities is to give you a list of your best internal linking opportunities, all right? So what you do is go to Surfer and uh, type in the keyword that your new blog is about, type in the URL, and run audit with NLP, okay? That's natural language processing. Run audit with NLP, okay? And when you open the audit, you need to scroll down and check out the details for the internal links section. So this internal links report will give you a list of all the internal links your content should include for the best SEO and user experience. All right, so it gives you a list of all the other URLs that you need an internal link going to the new page. So it'll tell you um, what which pages they, they are, okay? And another thing that you need to do is also choose the right spot for your internal links. So you just can't post an, an internal link anywhere on the page. There's a specific area you need to put the internal link where it makes sense. And Surfer does this for you. So all you need to do is hover over the red exclamation points. So if you don't have an internal link, um, it'll have an, a red exclamation point, all right? So hover over that and you will see the suggested placement for the link, okay? So all you have to do is choose the exact word or phrase uh, to turn into an anchor. So it'll tell you the sentence and then you just select um, the, the part of the sentence that you want to turn into an anchor text, okay? So another thing to point out that's really important, and this is, you know, regardless of how you add internal links, I wanna tell you a very, very important thing you need to understand. And it's, an, it's a golden internal linking rule that you should never forget. All right, now this is something that you need to be aware of, and I wanna tell this to you, but before I tell you this golden internal linking rule, I wanna take a few seconds and invite you to leave me a review. If you are liking this content, or if you're not, I am looking for feedback. So leave me a review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash the calm marketer that's rate this podcast.com forward slash the calm marketer so after you're done with this episode just go there leave me a quick review let me know what you think and i'd be happy to to read them and respond as well all right so now going back to the golden internal linking rule so here it goes Never use an identical anchor text for two different URLs across your site, all right? So always include at least one of the keywords that the page you link to ranks for as anchors. At the same time, make sure the anchor text is comprehensive and user-friendly and describes what the page is about, okay? So for example, don't use the anchor text uh, dentist in Los Angeles pointing to two different pages on your site. It must only go to one page, okay? The reason for this is you don't wanna confuse Google and tell Google that Dentist in Los Angeles is, there's multiple pages for that. You only wanna point it to one page on your site, okay? And also make sure that it's comprehensive and user-friendly and describes what the page is about, right? So 
yes, put the keywords in your anchor text, but also uh, be a little bit more liberal and describe what the page is about, right? So add some additional descriptive keywords on there. And don't be afraid to make your anchor text longer than, you know, four to five words. So describe what the page is about and use that as an anchor text as well. Okay. Now, going to the third and final thing that you need to do to optimize your blog post once it's published. Now, uh, this one is, is, is interesting because it, this one is all about content length. Yes, content length. So you want to check your content length and make sure that it isn't too long or too short once you hit publish. All right. So yes, before you write a blog post, you have a content length and you know exactly how many pages or how many words you should be writing. But the thing about publishing on your page is that even though the text alone is fine and it meets the length requirements, the blog template that you have, like if it's a WordPress blog template, it can really ruin your optimization after you hit publish. So in many cases, the article that you have you know, the text is surrounded by other elements like sidebars, banners, uh, call to action, other types of things that surround the core text. And all these things are still regarded as content according to Google, right? So make sure that your content overall on the page is not too high. If the content is very high, you need to remove some of those banners, sidebars, pop-ups, call to actions on the page so that it fits the average word count for the top 10 pages that are ranking uh, for the keyword. Now, this is a little hard to do manually. So I would recommend using Surfer, okay? So you use uh, Surfer's audit. Okay, once again, same with the internal linkings the internal linking report. On that same audit report, you'll see uh, the word count section. And if the word count is too high, then you need to go and check to see what types of elements you need to remove. All right. So, so yes, you can't get rid of all of your call to actions. All right. But see what you can update and see if there's other types of things around the content that you need to remove and do so. Now, I know this is something that you might not have thought about, but um, it's really important because content length is, is, a, is, a, is an indirect ranking factor. And you want to make sure that if you are wanting to rank on the first page, then your content length needs to be similar to your competitors. Now, if you want to um, use Surfer, I highly recommend you use Surfer. Um, go to thecalmmarketer.co forward slash Surfer, and you could try it out for seven days and, you know, do the optimization, you know, uh, within the seven days. And if you like it, you know, you can move forward with the subscription. If not, you could just cancel it. And, and, and you'll definitely use it quite a bit. I use it all the time for my clients and it has helped quite a bit. So, um, this is the first part of this three-step process or this three series, um, on the next episode, I will talk about how to optimize a blog post one month later. Later, All right. So with that said, I will see you on the next episode.